when the Buddha lists the factors for awakening, he says there are some that are appropriate when the mind is sluggish. Those are the factors of analysis of qualities, rapture, persistence. Those are the qualities that energize the mind. And then there are the qualities that are appropriate when the mind is over excited, over energetic. Serenity, concentration, equanimity, those calm the mind down. You need all of them. It's a matter of finding balance. There's one quality, though, that's appropriate all the time, and that's mindfulness. And so it's especially important as we practice that so we understand what mindfulness is. Sometimes you hear that mindfulness is simply an open, accepting awareness of things, simply noting what's happening and allowing it to happen without interfering. But that's actually equanimity. The Buddha himself defines mindfulness as the ability to remember for a long time what you've done and what you've said, and what other people have done and what other people have said. It's the ability to keep things in mind. And what do you keep in mind? One, you keep in mind the need to develop the skillful factors of the path and to abandon the unskillful ones. This applies to all the factors. Once you know what's right view and wrong view and right resolve and wrong resolve, all the way down to right concentration or wrong concentration, you keep in mind your intention to develop the right side and to abandon the wrong. The Buddha compares this to being a gatekeeper in a frontier fortress. In a frontier fortress you have to be very careful because there are spies and other people from the outlying countries. They want to come in and do damage in your fortress. So you have to be very careful who comes in, who doesn't come in. And mindfulness, the Buddha says, is like a wise gatekeeper. Recognizes who should be let in, who should not be let in. And lets in only those who should be let in. So you have to keep in mind this distinction. What kind of qualities in mind are skillful and which ones are not? Which ones do you want to develop and which ones do you want to abandon? There's another passage where the Buddha says mindfulness is like a goad. And most of us have gotten away from animal husbandry and farming and don't even know what a goad is. It's a stick you have with a sharp point and use it to poke your animals when they're going the wrong direction or if they're not going when they should be going. So it's this ability to remember what's skillful and what's not, and to give yourself a little push in the right direction. That's what mindfulness does for you. And sometimes it's more than just a little push. There's another passage where the Buddha says, when you see that something unskillful has arisen in your mind, then you act as if your hair were on fire. And you do everything you can, as quickly as you can, to put it out and you are relentless and mindful in doing this. So all these passages show that mindfulness is not just a broad, open, accepting state of mind. It serves a particular purpose, keeping in mind what you know about what's skillful and what's not, and reminding yourself that you really do want to pursue the skillful path and to avoid the unskillful one. This is why mindfulness and discernment usually go together. In Thai they have that phrase, sati panya. Mindfulness and discernment, it's the word for intelligence. It's the intelligence of a really practical person who knows the distinction between what's skillful and what's not, and keeps that in mind all the time. And 
the Buddha's portrayal of how all the different factors of the path work together. Mindfulness, right view, which is the discernment factor, and right effort all go together. You know what's right and what's wrong, what's skillful and what's not. You keep that in mind, and you keep in mind your desire to do the right thing, as we chanted just now, to generate the desire to prevent unskillful qualities that haven't arisen from arising, and to abandon them if they have arisen, and to generate the desire to give rise to skillful qualities, and then once they're there, to encourage them to develop them. So you're not just sitting here watching things coming and going, arising and passing away, and say, well, that's that. You realize that your mind is the factor that shapes your life. And what it's going to do is going to have a huge impact. You keep that in mind. So when the mind begins to wander off, you use a little goad of mindfulness and bring it right back. Give it a sharp poke. And sometimes all I have to do is just remind it, and it will come back. Other times it's a little bit more resistant. This is where you have to use other techniques as well. But again, mindfulness has to keep all those various techniques that you've heard about and that you've actually put into practice and found that they work. You've got to keep all that in mind, because we do have this tendency to forget. And sometimes the, the forgetting is just a simple dropping of what we're trying to remember, and other times it's a willful forgetfulness. When part of the mind has decided it's, it's not interested in the path at all, it wants to go off and get a little pleasure on the side fantasizing about this, this beautiful person, that lovely sound, these nice flavors, whatever you're fantasizing about. And when you're in that state of mind, you willfully forget the fact that you're sitting here and meditating, or that you're trying to follow a path of practice. That's when mindfulness has to be especially sharp in reminding you. So try to be very clear about what mindfulness does. We're not here just to watch things arise and pass away and try to be equanimous. I mean, there are times when equanimity is going to be needed, but not the type of, type of equanimity that just kind of lets things take over, regardless of whether they're good or bad. You want to keep in mind the Buddha's teachings. You want to keep in mind the Buddha's example. You want to keep in mind whatever other teachings you've learned that are skillful, and your own discoveries of your own mind about what's skillful and what's not, and what works and what doesn't work. This is why mindfulness is useful at all times, regardless of whether the mind is sluggish or over-energized. Over you can't forget these things. Because otherwise it's like having a water buffalo and you have no goad, you have no control over the buffalo at all. If you're trying to plow a field, the buffalo will just go anywhere at once, and then it'll stop. And the field never gets plowed, you never get done with your work. So remember that little voice inside that remembers, that remembers to be heedful that remembers to be on top of things, and remembering the importance of your actions. They really do shape your life. They really do shape your meditation. The decisions you're making from moment to moment to moment are important. Keep that point in mind. And you find that it really does help keep you on the track, keep you on track, keeps, keeps you at work. And if the work seems tiresome, remember that it's not all just work. There are the elements of serenity, concentration, rapture. 
all the good things about being on the path as well. But the mindfulness is the stick. You have to have both the carrot and the stick in order to get your field plowed.